Welcome everybody to today's webinar on connection design within RESA 3D and RESA Floor. Today's webinar is going to focus on three programs. It's going to be RESA Connection, RESA Floor, and RESA 3D. Now with RESA Connection, we're going to be talking about version 1.1, a new version that's just come out, as well as new versions of RESA Floor and RESA 3D, specifically versions 5.1.1 and 9.1.1. Now many of you probably already own RESA 3D 9.1 or RESA Floor 5.1, the extra point one here is a minor update we've released to the program that includes all of the RESA Connection integration information. These updates are currently being uploaded to our website and should be posted uh, and available on there shortly. Regarding RESA Connection, version 1.0 has been out for a while as a standalone program. and We're going to talk about what's new in version 1.1. Now, everybody who already owns version 1.0 is automatically getting this version 1.1 upgrade, and it will be mailed to you and available for download shortly here. Now, aside from all of the sheer and moment connections and standalone functionality that previously existed in version 1.0, we've now added full integration with RESA 3D and RESA Floor. And we've also added foreign shape databases because now RESA Connection is actually going to be sharing shape databases with RESA 3D and RESA Floor. Now, what's coming along in version 2.0? Well, we're going to be having vertical brace connections, splice connections, axial loads on connections, and AutoCAD DXF export. Version 2.0 of RESA Connection is something that we've just gotten started on working now that we've finished up version 1.1, and so we're going to be working on that over the next few months in order to get all these new features in here. And everybody who already owns version 1.0, and even those of you who buy version 1.1, will get version 2.0 at no extra cost as an upgrade as soon as that comes out. Now let's talk about the integration because that's the big new feature in RESA Connection 1.1. We're going to talk about the workflow here. So the workflow is that you would start off in your RESA 3D or your RESA Floor model. And within that model, you're going to define connection types using something called a connection design rule that we're going to take a look at. Once you've laid out all of these different connection types, then you're actually going to be able to assign connections to member ends. Then you'll be able to solve your model and get end reactions, and you can transfer those end reactions to RESA Connection. Once you've got them in RESA Connection, you'll be able to correct things and solve, and then you'll be able to send all of those connection results back to RESA 3D or RESA Floor. So without further ado, I'm now going to send us over to uh, RESA 3D and RESA Floor so that we can take a look at how we can lay this out. So I'm now launching a RESA Floor model. Now we're going to take a look at a RESA 3D model embedded within RESA Floor. So those of you who just use 3D on your own, you'll see exactly how this is done. And at the same time, those of you who use RESA Floor, you'll also see the methodology. So I want to cover basically both methodologies. Very similar between both programs, just a couple of slight differences due to the way that they are set up. OK, so within the RESA Floor model here, um, the first thing that we're going to do is just take an overview look at this structure. So I'm going to come to the full model view. And what we can see here is we have a three-story steel building. So I'm going to come to the roof up at the top here. And we're going to see what the layout is. I'm coming up to the member label button so that we can see basically we have uh, a variety of wide flange beams set up here. And we have some moment frames in this structure. And then we have some identical second and third floor floor layouts, and these are going to have composite steel framing. Let me go ahead and solve the model, and we can get a look at that. I did. Okay, so we're running through the solution right now, and the program is going through uh, various iterations in order to optimize all of our framing. And this is just standard RESA floor behavior at this point. And once we get through the design, then we're going to take a look at our connection rules that we've defined in here. All right, excellent. So here we go. We see a lot of these wide flange beams uh, with camber and studs and the such. 
all that design's been taken care of. Well, let's take a look under the data entry toolbar. And if I come to this new connection rules spreadsheet, this pulls up our connection design rules. And under the connection design rules, we have uh, several different rules laid out. Now, I've set this model up ahead of time with these rules, and we're going to go over how you use them. And then near the end of the webinar, we're actually going to go back and see how you would assign them. This is going to make the most sense in terms of learning how this interaction works together. So to begin with, I've set up four different connection rules, and you see I've given a label to each of them. So this is where I'm going to group together different groups of beams. So here I have my roof beams, moment frame. I have the floor beam to girder connections, and I have the beam to column connections, slightly different between these two. And underneath each one, I can assign a connection type. So you can see, for example here, that for my floor beam to girder connection, we have a drop-down showing all the different reads of connections that are available. And so here's my girder beam end plate shear connection. And I can set whether or not the beam connection uh, is bolted or welded. And uh, I can set whether or not this is going to be bolted or welded to the girder. So you set each one of these up, and you set all this information up ahead of time so that you can then transfer into Risa 3D. So I'm going to close out of that connection rules spreadsheet at this point. And now we're going to take a look at how these connection rules have been assigned to each member. So if I come to the beams spreadsheet, you'll see that there's now a Reza connection tab up at the top. So here's where we set our beam information. Here's the hot rolled unbraced links and the such. And under Reza connection, this is where we set what is the start connection and end connection. And you'll see that this here refers to moment frame beams for the start and end connection. What is moment frame beams? Well, that's simply a connection rule that I set up that refers to a column beam flange plate moment connection that's bolted to the beam. Similarly, I have these laid out for each member. But working through the spreadsheets is going to be a bit tedious to try to lay this out. This is why I've done everything graphically. So if I come up here, this was our member labels button within Reza Floor. We have the member end labels button right here. And if I click the little drop down next to it, you'll see there's a couple new options. Let's take a look at the connection rule option. So if I zoom in, you'll see that for each beam that's in my structure, I've laid out different connections. So here's my floor beam girder connection, beam column, moment frame beams. And if I drag my toolbars in the upper right out of the way, you'll see that these are actually all color coded. And so at a glance, I can see that all the infill beams in my building are all the brown ones, the floor beam girder. Every column has four yellow connections coming into it. That's the beam column connections. Then the turquoise are actually going to be the moment connections for the lateral portions of the building. Now. Because the second floor and third floor are completely identical in this building, I've only assigned the connection rules to the second floor. The reason for that is there's no reason for me to double the amount of connections that I have to design and sift through the results for if I know that they're going to be identical from floor to floor. Now up at the roof, the roof is a completely symmetric layout. And what I've got set up for loading on the roof is basically a uh, dead load, a roof live load, and then I have a tapered snow load set up as well. And so that tapered snow load is going to be uh, affecting how my design is. And you'll see that I've got this basically laid out on the edges there to represent snow that would build up on, say, a parapet at the edge of this roof. Now, because the loading is all symmetrical up on the roof here, I really only need to design these two bays and the connection information that I get from those two bays obviously will work for the rest of this. So to some degree, we're going to actually speed up our solution by smartly realizing that you know, we may be able to get away with one connection design that's going to tell us uh, how things will work for even you know, 100 different applications. So it's up to you as to how far in depth you want to take this. But I've sort of shown the roof and the second floor as varying examples. And certainly in here, if this is uniform loading, there's really no need to design this again and again and again when it's all going to be the same. Still, we'll go through that anyhow. So we've taken a look at the connection rules as assigned. Let's go over to the Risa 3D model now. So I'm going to use the director tool in the upper right corner to go to Risa 3D. And you know that there's a Risa connection option here. We're going to come back to that and actually use that shortly. So I come into Risa 3D now, and it pops up our information about seismic loads and the such. And so here's the lateral portion. Now, those of you who have Risa 3D, this is basically the part where you would start out as opposed to you know, going through Risa floor. So I've got my Risa 3D model laid out here. 
And just the same, under the data entry toolbar, I have the connection rules spreadsheet. And so I pop that up, and this spreadsheet's actually shared between 3D and Floor, and this will work in both programs. And so in Risa 3D, I can come up and take a look at my member end labels options here. Once again, connection rule is a choice. When I choose that, we'll see I have moment frame beams chosen for each one of these. Now, when we solve in Risa 3D, I'm just going to go in and solve a batch solution here. I'm solving a batch, and what that's going to do is that's going to solve all of my load combinations so that when we get a connection design here, we're going to get a connection design that's basically enveloped for all of the combinations. Now, if I come to my load combination spreadsheet here, what we're going to find is I've uh, set up 16 load combinations for this model. And if we go to the design tab of the load combination spreadsheet, this is where we can control what load combinations are used for what material. And what you'll see here is that we actually have a connection checkbox now in here. And what this means is, is this load combination going to be used for connection design or not? Now in this case, I would like all of these load combinations to be used for connection design. And you note that I've generated all of these at ASD level loads. Let's go to the global parameters for a minute in the codes tab. And what we'll see is that I've set this up to use the AISC 13th edition ASD code for my hot rolled steel. And I also have a choice as to what code I want to use for my connection design. So I'm also going to use ASD in this case. But you may run into situations where maybe you prefer to run an LRFD, but for connection designs, whoever is doing that is going to want to run an ASD. This allows you to do that separately. So what I could have done is come into the load combination spreadsheet and generated LRFD combinations for my hot roll design and then ASD combinations for my connection design, and I can control which is which using these checkboxes in here. In this case, we're going to use ASD for both the steel design and the connection design in this model. So once I've run my batch solution, now Risa 3D has compiled all of its results, and I've solved my Risa floor model, so it's also compiled all of its results. So I have all of my different loads, or basically my end reactions, for each beam that have been put together. At this point now, I actually want to put these connections together. And for that, we're going to go over to Risa Connection. Now, the first time that I want to do connection design, the best way to go about it is going to be to come up to the Director tool up here. When I click on that, you'll see I can go back to Risa Floor. I can go into Risa Foundation. Well, now I can also go to Risa Connection. And note that right up here, I have this model created in my Connection Integration folder called ConnectionIntegration.RFL. This is my model, and you'll see that in this model right here that we do not actually have a Risa Connection model in that folder. When I come up to Director and choose Risa Connection, what it's doing right now is it's actually creating a Risa Connection model with the same name as that Risa 3D model, and it's placing it in the same folder. So now I have this Risa Connection model called ConnectionIntegration.RCN, a totally separate file in this case. And so now we're in here, and the first thing we'll see is that we see five connections listed, and this is for the header of the Project Explorer. This is the overall model. So I have these five connections. What these are is these are actually relating back to my connection design rules. These are not actually connections, but rather connection groups. So I've grouped together the different ones. For example, roof beams. That's a gravity-only connection in here. We can come in here and see that roof beams are supposed to be a girder beam clip angle, a single clip angle shear connection. And I see right there a single clip angle shear connection. Similarly, we have the moment frames, the floor beam to girder. Now, I have five or four connection design rules listed here, and I've assigned them, but I have five connection groups. The reason for that is we've automatically recognized that a beam to column flange connection is going to be different from a beam to column web connection. So I've assigned this beam column connection to all beams that frame into columns, regardless of whether they frame into the beam or the web. Visa Connection will automatically split those out into two groups for us. Now the first thing I want to do in Visa Connection is come through and review my connections. So I'm going to click on Roof Beams here, and that's going to pull up my Roof Beams group. And we get a thumbnail image of every single uh, beam that I've assigned this to within my model. And you'll see this is actually to scale. 
So as I scroll down through these thumbnails, I can get an idea of how things look. And my roof beams appear to be all roughly the same size, so it's all about the same connection. We're good there. Now, using my Project Explorer on the right, I'm going to go to my next group, the moment frame beams. And so this is a uh, lateral connection to the flange of the column. And here we get a thumbnail image of every single moment frame beam. And the first thing that jumps out at me, uh, just from experience in connection design, is that we don't appear to have enough bolts on the web of these beams. So what I did was I just clicked on any one of these, and this pulls up that one particular connection, and here we get our 3D view of it. And so we can see that this is a connection between a W24 by 76 beam and a W14 by 311 column. And we've got a three bolt connection on the web there. Well, I would want to have that connection run at least halfway down the web in order to get uh, stability on this. And so I'm going to come back up to the header or the group master connection basically here. And so what we can see is rather than selecting an individual connection, now I've selected this, and this is where we can actually set properties for the entire group. So if we take a look at the group properties down here, the first thing you'll see is that the shear load, moment load, and the such are set as various. They're various because each connection has its own shear load and its own moment load on there, and so we can't show that as a group property. But if I come to each individual connection that's part of that group, here we get its specific load that's associated with it and its member type. So certain uh, aspects of the connection we would want to set up at the group level. And so the first thing I want to do here is I want to say I want every single one of these connections to have a three bolt setup or a four bolt setup rather than a three bolt. So I'm going to come here to my group properties. I'm going to go to beam bolts and I'm going to say I want four bolts per row on the beam. And this will take just a second to update every single connection that falls underneath that and now we'll see that we have four bolts per beam on all these rather than three. And that certainly looks a lot better. And so we're sort of pre-setting this information. When Risa Connection first generated all of these connections, it used some default values. So there's nothing really smart about what it puts together. Rather, we've just set it up so that the default for all flange plate moment connections is a three-bolt setup. If you have other defaults that you want to set up, maybe we would always want to go with this four-bolt setup, one thing that we can do is we now have a save as defaults feature. This is very similar to Risa 3D and Risa Floor, where in the spreadsheets you can right click and save as defaults to set your own uh, initial settings. In here I can say save as defaults, and now every new flange plate moment connection that's ever created will have four bolts rather than three. Now let's go back and keep reviewing some of these connections. The first thing that I like to do whenever I come over into Risa Connection is I like to eyeball all of the thumbnails that we have so that I can see whether or not anything looks goofy. So under the floor beam to girder connections, this all looks pretty well and good right here as we scroll down. But then when I get to the bottom here, I see a couple of connections that may end up causing us trouble. So let's take a look at this connection, for example. When I click on it, what I can see is that the beam and the girder are both W10 by 12s. So we have some very small beams here. And you can see that with a three bolt connection, that end plate actually pokes through the bottom flange of the beam. So we know that we would have a problem right there. Well, this definitely is a case where for this specific connection, I would like this to be a two bolt rather than a three bolt. Although for all the rest of them that are in this group, I want them to be two bolts. Well, I can override specific connections in here simply by going to the connection itself and changing its properties rather than changing the group properties. So if I wanted to change all of these connections to be a two bolt, I would come up here to my floor beam girder and change the number of girder bolts. And we can see that's set to three right now. But instead, I'm gonna come down here back to the problem connection and I'm going to select it and come in and change this to be two bolts per row. And I had a similar one right here as well where we had the same issue. These need to be a two bolt connection rather than a three bolt connection. Now if I come back up to the group properties, what we're going to find out is that this group now says bolts per row various because we no longer have an equal number of bolts. It depends on which connection you're on as to whether we have a two bolt or a three bolt setup at this point. So now coming back down, um, another issue that we're having is we have this cope occurring down at the bottom of the beam. And that's definitely going to need to be done if we're framing a W10 into a W10. Now let's go back into Risa for a moment. 
if I come back to the Risa 3D model and actually kick us back into the Risa floor model, what we're going to find is I can track down this connection. So this says that this is uh, member 96 on floor 1. And so I'm on uh, floor 1, and the, the first floor is actually called the second floor, but that would be the first numerically. And I can come in here and turn on the member labels using this button right up here. And using the member labels, I can see M96 is right there. So here's what our issue is. At this stairwell, we have a W10 framing into a W10, something that on plan wouldn't necessarily jump out at you as a problem. But of course, once you see this in 3D now, you realize, hey, that coping is going to cost a lot of money on that bottom flange. It would be a lot easier just to make this beam right here a W12 instead. So what I can do in Risa Floor, actually, is I can come in and use my design tool to click on that beam, and I can change that to a W12 by 14. Now, similarly, we can come over here and change this identical beam over here to a W12 by 14 over near that stairwell. And now that we've updated those beams, if I go up to the director tool and go back to Risa Connection, what's going to happen is it's going to update my Risa Connection model. So it's now sent the new geometry information over. And if I come to my floor beam uh, connection now, and I come back to the header for that one, we're going to see in the thumbnails that those connections are now a little better looking in that regard. So here we go. Now here's our W12 rather than our W10. So we can update things from the Risa floor model into the Risa connection model. And we'll actually update vice versa, and we'll see that shortly. Now. Even though I put the deeper beam in, the cope didn't get removed automatically. Once we cope something in the program, it's going to leave that in place because it assumes that it's intentional, and it'll leave it until we tell it otherwise. I want to get rid of that, so what I'm going to do is come to a 2D view for this connection, and I'm going to take a look at a side view of the beam, and in here I can see the cope listed. If I just click right here on this dimension and type in zero, that's going to get rid of that. So we can reset any of these dimensions that we want to. So let's go back and go to the other connection that was coped out here, go to the 2D view, the beam view, and we'll just zero out that cope as well, and that's going to get rid of that. So that will no longer be uh, causing an issue at this point. The next thing we're going to do is go to the next group, the beam column flange connections. And scrolling through here, I don't really see any issues offhand. So let's go to the last group now, the beam column web connections. And so we're going to get some thumbnails on this one. Now, this is a case where we have a variety of different column sizes in our building. And so I've got some really heavy W14s we can see here, some rather light W12s, but I've grouped all of these together uh, as one connection type. Now, one option I have is just to continue along uh, with all these connections grouped together. Another thing I could do is add a little bit more granularity to my RISA model. So I could come back in here and maybe go to my connection rule spreadsheet, and instead of calling this beam slash call, I could actually rename this one to be beam column W12, and I could create a new connection rule called beam call W14. And I could appropriately assign those uh, so that all the beams that go into 12-inch columns have the 12, and all the ones that go into 14s have 14s. And that would ensure that when we came over here, now I had two different groups. So then I could control the, the 12s separately from the 14s. But right now we have them all lumped together, and let's just say that that's fine for this circumstance. So now I'm going to come in and click on this first connection here, and what we see is a W14 by 311 with a W12 by 16 framing into it. So it's a tiny beam into a big column. And one issue that we can see right offhand is that these bolts are actually tucked pretty far back there in the column. And that's conceivably going to be very difficult to actually put together out in the field. One thing we can do for this connection to make it easier for the erectors is to actually extend this shear tab out. And Risa Connection has the extended shear tab extra calculations built in so that we'll actually be able to consider the effects of the added moment caused by the eccentricity on there and things such as plate flexural buckling uh, due to that extra extension. So let's come into the header, the master sort of beam column connection here, and let's change it so that my plate is 6 inches wide rather than 4 inches. And when I hit that, you'll see on the left side of the screen this will all update after a second. So now we've made the plate wider, but we also have to adjust another dimension, and that is the column beam clearance. 
So sir, currently the column is going to be a half inch away from the beam web. Let's set that to be two and a half inches. And so now when I set that, the beams and the bolts will all move out. And now we've got a little more room to work with, at least, in terms of putting this together. And hopefully that moment's not going to kill us, but we'll find out in terms of the design once we get into this. Okay, so at this point we've eyeballed all the connections. Let's find out whether or not these are actually going to work. For that, I can come up here and you'll see we have three solve options within Reza Connection. I have solved the current connection, which is just the single one connection I have selected. I can solve group. That will select all of the connections in each group. Or I can solve the project, and that will solve all of my connections in my entire Reza Connection model. In this case, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to click on that, and what we're going to see is this progress bar pop up. So this is going through every single load combination and reaction result from both Risa 3D and from Risa Floor, and it's solving every single connection one at a time based off these. And you'll see that the progress bar moves at a varying speed because certain connections have less checks than others, so they solve a little bit faster. And it'll slow down for some of the checks that are a little more involved for each connection. Okay, so we're nearly done solving at this point. We just have a couple more connections left to go here. And then we're going to be able to review our results. And the easiest way to review those is going to be to take a look at the Project Explorer in the upper right corner. This is going to show us what passes and fails. Okay, so now we've finished running through that. And here we see that for our roof beams, the, the master connection here, the head of the group, says pass. And what that implies is that every single roof beam connection that falls underneath it passes. But when I come to the moment frame beams, we see that it fails. And so if we see fail for the group connection, that means that at least one sub-connection underneath that failed. We can see a whole lot of them failed here. Let's just take a look at the first one. This failed for load combination number 11. And if I come up here and take a look, load combination number 11 comes from Risa 3D, and it's the IBC 1613 with overstrength. Now let's just duck back over to Risa 3D for a second to get a look at why we would be failing. One of the reasons is we're going to have a very high load here. Taking a look at load combination number 11, this is uh, earthquake load in the X direction, and you note that I have this omega symbol on here. Well, if I take a look at my Risa 3D model, what I've actually done is I've assigned seismic design rules to these frames. Now this is totally optional, and if you're doing wind design and you're in a part of the country where seismic doesn't control, it's not that you have to do this for Risa connection at all. You'll still get your correct connection design results. I'm just taking a little deviation for a second to show uh, everybody who has to deal with the seismic detailing this extra feature that we have in here. And that is I've set all of my moment frames to be SMF, which is the special moment frame under the seismic design rules. And Part of the special moment frame means that overstrength is required for the beams. And so when I'm designing my connections here, I'm designing them for this load combination omega times ELX. And omega is our overstrength factor that's dictated by the code. And in the global parameters, we can see the omega value is 3. So what this means is that my beam connections are actually going to be designed for three times the normal earthquake uh, end reaction. And so that's going to mean that we're going to have to put together some fairly beefy connections in here. And that's a good explanation as to why this failed, because we've brought over the overstrength and reactions as well as the regular ones. Okay, so let's take a look at this connection and see, when I click on it, under the reports, what's caused the problem for us. And you'll have to pardon me. I had to reduce my screen resolution so it would appear at a decent size on yours. But as a result, things appear a bit crowded. But if you're using this on a normal resolution, it looks much better. So now I scroll down here, and we can take a look at each limit state for this connection. And there's quite a few. And we see the result, and we see a unity check listed. And the unity check is simply the uh, required capacity divided by the available capacity. And coming down, let's take a look for the worst case that we have here. Well, it looks like flange plate tension rupture is causing us a problem. That's almost three times overstressed. If I click on flange plate tension rupture, it's going to expand this out and show us a detailed check of what it came up with. So we can see AISC equation J42, what we have is a uh, uh, capacity 
that is basically FUAE. So this is just your standard uh, net uh, area of the beam flange or of the plate uh, multiplied by its tensile capacity. And so we're definitely way overstressed on that. Well, let's take a look. What is our moment plate on here? If I expand that out, I can see it's a 3 8 inch thick plate that's 6 inches wide made out of A36. And taking a look at my 3D image, it does appear to be kind of small for this connection. So once again, just sort of an eyeball thing. Let's go up to the moment frame group and change all of the moment or all the flange plates at once. So we'll make them a bit bigger. The first thing we'll do is we'll make them wider. I'm going to set this to be an 8 inch wide plate rather than a uh, 6 inch. The second thing we'll do is make them thicker. Rather than a 3 8 let's go all the way up to a 7 8 because this is going to have to be a heavy duty plate to handle these sort of uh, seismic overstrength moment loads. So now we're up to a 7 8 and now under material, I'm going to set this, rather than A36, we're going to go up to a grade 50 plate on here, so that way we also get a bit of extra capacity out of the whole thing. So now that I've set that, I can come back to this connection. Now you'll note that my pass fail has actually disappeared in this case. Because we've changed things about the connection, we had to clear the results out. Well, if I go back to my report, I have a button right here that says report not calculated. Press here for calculation. This is going to be the same as saying solve current. And right now, all I need to do is solve this current connection. It would take a minute to run through the entire group. And if I'm going to be fine tuning this one connection to find out what's the matter with all of them, it's a lot faster if I just resolve the single connection rather than all of them. So if I scroll down, the next thing that we're going to find an issue with is the flange plate weld strength. And so I have a double fillet weld set up on here. And in this case, um, my double fillet weld that's using a uh, 3 8 weld in this case is not working out for us. So when I come to the moment column weld, oh, sorry, not a 3 8 it's actually a quarter inch weld that I've got set on here. So my quarter inch double fillets, and we can sort of zoom in and see those in 3D on those flange plates, totally insufficient. Well, let's try coming in here and setting that instead of being a quarter inch, let's go 6 16 for the fillet size. So that's going to bump all these up to a 3 8 weld. See if perhaps that's going to work for this connection. Well, we come in here to the reports and we recalculate and we find out that uh, that has, in fact, worked in this circumstance. But we're failing for other things. Well, if I solve the whole group right now, what we'll find out is that while that particular connection did work in that case, if I come down to the reports, we will find other situations where the flange plate weld strength fails at 3 8 So rather than trying to get up to some really big heavy fillet welds, let's just switch this over at this point. And rather than using a type double fillet, I just went up to the master connection here, and I'm going to change that to a complete joint penetration weld. And so now, if I uh, switch that and resolve this whole group, we'll be able to see that now, rather than having a fillet weld, we actually have that CJP weld shown on those flange plates. And that's actually going to take care of the welds for all these connections. But we're still getting a failure, and the failure is in bolt shear at flange plate. So we can see that based off of this, with my 3 quarter inch A325N bolts, that those bolts are way over for shear on the flange plates. Well, the three bolts in a row may not be enough for a heavy-duty seismic connection such as this. So I'm going to come back up, and I'm going to change that to be five bolts rather than three. And so let's see if the five-bolt layout is actually going to be sufficient. I'll redesign this group, and we'll take a look here. Oh, and I made the mistake of changing it only on one connection, not on the master. So this is where I should have come up. Oh, I see. I've changed the bolts per row on the beam rather than the moment. So we'll flip that right back over, and we'll get the moment bolts, because it's the moment beam bolts that we actually want to increase. So with the moment beam bolts increased, now we can solve that group and see whether or not this is going to work out for us. And we'll see we're still getting a failure in this case, so that still isn't cutting it. Or rather than adding more bolts, maybe what we should do is increase the bolt size. So I'm going to go up to a one-inch bolt on the flanges rather than the three-quarter inch bolt. And I can come in, run another solution on that, and see how that works out. 
we're still getting a failure. But this is interesting right here. It says that we're failing even though the unity check is 0.9. Why is that? Well, if we take a look through our results here, we're going to see we're actually failing in geometry restrictions. So we pass for bolt spacing, but for edge distance, we're failing. Our inch and a half edge distance that we're using all around is no longer sufficient for those one inch bolts. So I'm going to come back to the group master here, and we're going to come to the moment bolt edge distance, and I'm going to change all the edge distances for the master connection to be two inches rather than an inch and a half. And that'll give us sufficient edge distance in every direction that we will actually be able to pass this connection and we'll be finally done messing around with all these moment connections. Okay, so once that's set, we'll go back and solve the group again. And this is basically the process you'll go through with connections and trying to get them passing is just finding out what's failing and coming up with ways to get them to work. Now I see I still have a couple more that are failing. And all the ones that are failing are listed as F3, that's floor three, and that's my roof in this case. These are all my uh, W21 roof moment frame beams. And when I look at this graphically, what we see is this thick, uh, wide flange plate we've put on here is actually outdoing that little W21 beam by a fair amount. And if I come to my reports, I'm going to see where I'm failing is in beam flange tension rupture. What can I do about the beam flange tension rupture? Well, I can't really increase the, uh, the beam flange size directly within here because this beam size has come over from my RISA 3D model. So that means I need to go back into RISA 3D to update that beam size. So in RISA 3D, I'm going to unselect my entire model, and I'll use the Criteria Select tool here to grab those W21 beams. I'm going to grab those, and I'm going to come up here to my Modify Members rather than Draw Members, and I'm going to say that we want to redefine these beams to be a new size, and that size we're going to go with is a W21 by 62. So I'll hit Apply to All Selected, and that's going to change all those roof beams to be a heavier W21 section. So now at this point, I can save my model. I'm going to run a batch solution again real quick here because we've changed the RISA 3D model, so that cleared out our uh, end reaction results. And then, using the director tool once again, I can send us right back into RISA Connection. So now we're in RISA connection. We're going to get this all set up here. Um, I will solve just the moment connections again since we've ran through some of the other ones. And then we'll see whether or not that finally took care of it. And the moment connections in this case are the trickiest, as is always the case when you're going to be working in these connection designs, because there's a lot of things that go into them. Well, now the moment frame beams pass. Well, that's excellent. Let's check out the floor beam girder connections, make sure that those all pass. And for that, um, I'm going to go ahead and just run a uh, group solution for those as well. We'll get through this and see whether or not we're going to pass and fail. All right, those all pass. Excellent. We're nearly done here. The beam column flange connections. Run that solution. Now, you see, this, con this solution runs a little bit slower than the other ones. This is because this connection is a little bit more involved in terms of a check. So it takes just a little bit more time to get through. We'll see that does fail, and let's see why. Well, when I eyeball this connection here, once again, we can see not enough bolts. But I don't need to override the group, because if we take a look, some of these beams are shallower. If I try to put four bolts on those, that's not going to help. So I'm just going to override the individual connections instead. So I'm going to say let's do four bolts for every one of these that fails. And this is a pretty quick process here just to run through, change those all to four bolt connections. And we've got just a few more here. Now, like I said earlier, another option I would have had here would have been to split this up into multiple groups, but there's no reason to do that in this case. So I'll solve my group again. Let's see if that took care of the issue. And so we're nearly done with this group solution takes just a moment, but we're getting a whole batch of all these connections, and bear in mind that we've got about 18 different load combinations that we're checking each one of these for. Excellent. Those all pass. And then lastly, the beam column gravity web connections. We'll come down here, once again run through a group connection design on all of these, and take a look at how things work out. Now in this case, this is an extended shear plate configuration as opposed to the shorter shear plate configuration. 
And so with the extended one, we have a lot of extra considerations, one of which is that there's actually a moment placed on these bolts due to the eccentricity between the bolts and the face of the column. And the best way to address that moment is just to increase the number of volts because that basically increases the moment arm, which is resisting and gets rid of the high lateral forces on the extreme bolts. So I'm just going to come through here and increase these bolts uh, just by taking a look at them. In this case, I'm going to try to get bolts that run almost the full depth of the flange. So I'm going to do four and five bolt connections where it appears necessary. So I can increase these fairly quickly right through this interface. And once we do that, we should be able to actually finally have all of our connections working correctly. And then we'll be able to bring our results back into RESA 3D. So you do need to spend a bit of time working within RESA connection. Now, in this case, I have RESA 3D and Floor on the same machine, but I could actually have them on different machines. So I could have two engineers in the office working together. So I would basically create my RESA connection model uh, and have one engineer who's working on all this connection layout. Well, at the same time, the other engineer can then continue to do other things and tweak the RESA 3D or RESA floor model. However, it's important that you coordinate because if you start changing beam sizes in the RESA 3D model, it may end up invalidating the beam sizes that the uh, connection engineer was working on. So now we've got a pass for almost everything. Let me just solve the final group in here so that way we have a complete solution. And normally at the end, if you haven't solved your groups like this, you can just come up to solve project and that will run through all the solutions. But what's important for this next step is that we have everything solved because we're now going to send our results back into RESA 3D. So it's one thing to see this pass everything in here, but we'd like to see this information presented graphically on the RESA 3D end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my connection model at this point. And then if I come up to File up at the top here, I have an option called Export Connection Results. And when I click that, what that's going to do is it's going to send results back over into RESA 3D. And you'll see the RESA 3D model refreshed itself, and we now have this spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet shows us all of our connection results. It says uh, whether they passed or failed, governing load combination, and it tells us the controlling limit state. So we can see for every single one of our moment frame beams, it's the beam flange tension rupture that is the problem. Well, aside from the spreadsheet, I can also view this graphically. So once I've brought those results back, I can come up here, and under my member end label options, I can take a look at connection results. And so here we can see these are all green, so it means everything passed. And I'll go back over into RESA floor, and I'll also do the same thing, member end options, connection results. And here we can see that all of these connections worked out for us. They're all green, so that's great. And I can see under the results toolbar, here's my connection results spreadsheet and we have a variety of different controlling limit states for each one. Okay, so we've gotten through round one. We've gotten everything laid out here. Now what about updates to the model? Well, in this case, let's come in here and take a look. My floors in RESA floor are defined as having an office load. Let's come in there and change what that load is. Rather than a 50 PSF live load, I'm gonna change this to a 60 PSF live load. And I'm going to say that five of that additional PSF ends up in dyne load, so it's seismically participating. So this should increase both our gravity and lateral loads. And we want to find out whether or not that's going to work with RESA connection. Let's uh, go ahead and resolve the RESA floor model now that we've got that information updated. And we'll find out uh, whether or not this will, in fact, work for us. So we're running through the solution right now re-optimizing the RESA floor model. Now one important thing to consider is that because RESA floor is automatically sizing our beams, it may upsize some of the beams that we had. And by upsizing, it may turn out that now we don't have enough bolts for certain connections. But we can very quickly see where that is the case and find out what these issues are. So now that I've solved, I'm going to use the director tool. I'll go back to RESA 3D because for our moment frame beams, it's also important that we uh, get a 3D solution in here as well. Certainly we want to see how the seismic forces are going to affect everything. So now that I've resolved the model with the higher forces, we need to find out how connection works. Once we've done the director tool and gotten our connection model set up, we actually don't need to go back to that connection model anymore. You'll find that when you come up to solve up at the top here, 
Aside from single envelope batch, there's a new button available called Design Connections. If I hit that, Risa 3D behind the scenes is going to go to my Risa connection model. It's going to send all of the latest end reaction information there. It's going to recalculate all my connection results, and then it's going to retrieve all those results and bring it back to my Risa 3D model. Now, in this case, you'll see I've got, uh, say, 100 or so connections in this model. So this is going to take a minute to run through. But once we get these solutions, we'll see how convenient it is to compare our previously laid out connections against our new loads. So there's a, a bit of work up front in just setting up that Risa connection model. But once it's in place, now we can very quickly check those connections for new loads, new configurations, new beam sizes, so on and so forth. So we're running through this right now, uh, and we're into the last group at this point. Now, this is designing both the gravity and lateral uh, connections here. So even though we're on the 3D side of floor, we're still getting our floor designs as well. And of course, if you're using Risa 3D, then it's based solely off of just what you've assigned in Risa 3D. And so at this point, it should just be wrapping up the last of the connection design, and then it's going to import these results right back in here. We can see saving connection design results. And we're back in. So now my spreadsheet's been updated, but let's just view things graphically. So I'm going to come up here to my member end options, and we're going to see connection results. And now we see some of these show up as red. So this connection that formerly worked uh, actually fails at this point now. I'm going to come over here on the left, and you'll see we have a new button that pops up after you've solved, and that is the connection button. And if I click on that, I can click on any member end. And that will pull up Risa connection with the appropriate connection. So we've actually just launched this exact connection, this uh, member M9, which is the one that I clicked on the end of, right in here. So it's an easy way to find your connection in your Risa connection model by using that 3D interface. And what we're going to find here is that it's a beam flange tension rupture issue. And if I were to click on other ones, like this one over here, we're going to find that it ends up being the exact same issue for all of these. It's a beam flange tension problem, and we can review that also through the connection results here by seeing that we're failing some of these. They're over one, and all of it's beam flange tension rupture. Well, that tells me right there that we actually need to upsize these beams on here. And so I'm going to come in here, unselect my entire model, and we're going to grab now all those lower moment frame beams, the W24 by 76s, and I'm going to change those now to be uh, W24 by 94 instead. So we're going to upsize that. That has a beefier flange, and so that should be able to resist these loads a little bit better. And I'll just come back and run a batch solution once again. And then at this point, I could run the design connections all over again. And so let's just go ahead and do that since it will only take a moment. And then we'll get the updated sizes and see whether things actually work out. So once again, just running through a full solution on this. Now once this is done, we're going to go back into Risa floor. We're going to find out whether the increased gravity loads cause us any problems. But then we're also going to learn how we can assign those connection design rules. Now I mentioned that we were going to come full circle in that because this model that I initially set up already had the design rules laid out. But I'm going to show you how to create a design rule and apply it now that you know how to actually use the integration between the two programs. And just to summarize what we've taken a look at so far, using the director tool, we can get over into the Risa connection model, which creates a Risa connection model, which then can be accessed on that machine or from other machines and be worked with sort of independently. And then once we've set that up in Risa connection, we can export results back to 3D. Or if connection and 3D are present on the same machine, we can use the design connections function that's underneath the solve toolbar, or we can use that white connection button that pops up over on the left here in order to pull up specific connections. So the programs are really intertwined with each other quite a bit, and that was intentional to make it as easy as possible to go back and forth between them. Okay, so it turns out that increasing that beam flange size maybe wasn't sufficient in what we wanted to accomplish. So we would have to go back and do some more tweaking. But let's go back to Risa floor at this point, and let's review our connection results that we've gotten. And so if I come to the second floor here, we can see aside from the moment frame beams, I actually have one shear connection. And let's take a closer look at it by hitting the connection button and then clicking on that member end. 
And this plane shear connection is probably going to show up as failing within Riesa connection here. And sure enough, it does. What is the reason for failing? Bolt shear at beam. Well, obviously, we would just want to add an additional bolt onto this one, recalculate it, and then we'll find that it now passes. So that's sort of the workflow in that circumstance. So let's go ahead and add a new connection in at this point. You'll notice that I have a couple of long span girders on here, and let's just take a look at what the size is. I've got these W33 long girders that run across here. They're picking up quite a bit of load, and when I take a look at my connection rules, you'll note these are gray. Gray is none, so I haven't assigned any connection rules to those. Let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to come under the data entry toolbar to the connection rules spreadsheet, and I'm going to create a new line in here. And we're going to call this the long girder connection. And for the connection type, these are all framing into columns, so I'm going to call this the column beam double clip angle shear connection. And I'm going to say I want that bolted to the beam and welded to the column. Well, at this point, how do I assign this? Well, the methodology is the same for creating the connection rule, whether you're in Risa Floor or in Risa 3D. And when I come up here, the methodology is also the same. You would go to modify beams or modify members, as it were, in Risa 3D. And you always assign this to the beam end. And so we can come in here and say, change my Risa connection start and end connections to long girder. And when I say start and end, we're talking about the I end and the J end of the beam. So now, at, when I click on each girder, it's going to set the I end and the J end to this new purple long girder design rule. Now that I've got that assigned, I'm going to solve my model again. We're going to send that over into Risa Connection and see how well it works. Now, in order to send that to Risa Connection, because I haven't already preset up this connection, it's going to be a good idea to go in using the Director tool instead of using the Design Connections tool. You can see, though, there's actually an icon in Risa Floor right here for Design Connections right next to the Solve icon. So I solved to get my ordinary solution, and I can hit this button to do exactly what we did in Risa 3D, whereby I'm going to go back with my current loads, update my connection uh, results, and send them back into Risa Floor. So now that I've solved, I'm going to use the Director tool to go over to Risa Connection. No reason to go into 3D in this model because these are gravity-only beams. And we're going to get an update on this. And let's find out on our new long girder uh, gravity connection whether that's going to work. Well, looking at that right there, I can tell you that's not nearly enough bolts for this double angle connection. So let's give it a bit better initial sizing of, say, eight beam bolts. That looks much better for a heavy duty girder connection such as that. Now I can solve the group, and we see that everything passes. And at this point now, I can actually export those results back into Risa Connection, or into Risa Floor. Now, because I only solved that group, most of these connections are going to say connection not solved, because I would need to actually run through a full solution here in order to get that updated. But taking a look here, we can at least see that those pass. And if I want to see things further, I can hit the button right here, uh, the Connection Design button. And just like in Risa 3D, it's now going to go out and fetch all of my updated results based off the information that we just brought back into the program. So that's the idea behind the connection rules. And this is now available in Risa 3D and in Risa Floor, however, and uh, Risa Connection as well. However, uh, if you own Risa 3D or Risa Floor, before you use this, you'll have to download the 9.1.1 update. And if you have Risa Connection, you'll also have to download the new 1.1 that's available. 